with balloons, but this time a little bit more complicated. We're going to set up multiple lights to create a look and a feel that is very difficult to do with a single light, but still has the feeling of daylight. So we've got Gemma, we've got a large balloon, we've got some lights, let's do the setup. So if you're starting on a complicated set of lights, at least anything more than one, the best place to begin is with just a single light. Figure out what your key light is, what you want it to do, and set that correctly, and then build the extra lights around it. So I want a kind of a window light look. So I've got a large softbox over to the side. That's gonna be my main light. But we need to know how much light that's producing. So let's take a meter reading. So I've got my little flash meter here. I'll pop this underneath Gemma's chin, pointing it back at the light, and I'm getting a meter reading of F8. Now that's fine, but I'd like just a little bit more depth of field. We've got quite a, a large area to cover. So I'm gonna add a stop more light to this key light by increasing it, and I can do it here on the remote. Three clicks, that's one more stop. Let's just take a meter reading. And sure enough, we're up to F11. So that's the aperture number I'm gonna dial into the camera. F11. Let's take a shot and see how that looks. Hey, okay, here we go. So what we've got is really moody, dramatic lighting. Lighting from one side. It's soft, but it still has an edge to it. Now, if that's the look you're after, stop right now. That's perfect. But for this shot, I want to do something slightly different. I want to have a, a slightly more softer feel to the light. So I'm going to add a second light to fill in the shadows. So for the second light, I'm going to use my Streak Light 360. It's inside of the Westcott Apollo Orb softbox. Now, I could put it just right over the other side like this so it directly fills in the shadows and, and balances everything up. That might work fine, but I think what I'd like is just a little bit more light to the front so I keep a little bit of that edgy feel. So we'll bring the light round to the front like that. Make sure it's pointing at Gemma and make sure it's going to be out of my shot. So about there should be fine. Okay, so let's take a meter reading for that, see how it looks. So once again, I'm gonna take my, my flash meter here. I'm gonna point it back towards the light I want to meter. Press the test button, and that's giving me F5.6. Now I don't know whether that's right or wrong, so what I'm gonna do is take a picture and find out. Yeah, that looks pretty much okay. I'm happy with that. So I've set my key light and I've set my fill light. So the separation light's gonna go in behind. Now, I've gotta be careful where I put it because if I put it right back here, that's fine, but of course it's gonna be in the shot. And I don't really want to clone it out in Photoshop. I'd like just to move it a little bit. So let's put the separation light back here. Now for this I'm using the Rove Light 600, which is the same one as in the key light as well, but it's fine, you can mix lights together, flash points, streak lights, Rove lights, you can mix them all together and still get great shots. They can either be triggered by radio trigger or you can use them on their slave mode as well. Okay, so that's where we want it to go and I can angle that in, yeah that looks about right. Let's just take a meter reading there. Now again, I'm just gonna meter facing the light that I want to meter off of. Okay, so that is giving me an F8 exposure. So that's about a stop less than our key light. Let's see how that looks. Here we go. Yeah, that works really well, but when I look at the floor, I'm seeing there is a definite spill, a definite edge from that light. So the angle of that light isn't quite right. All I need to do is just angle the light up. Okay, and I can actually see it on the floor because this has a modeling light. I can see where that spill's going and I can angle it up so it hits the back of the sofa and the back of the balloons only. So that leaves me with just the background to light, and I'm gonna add in a fourth light, and this is purely for the background only. So it's not gonna to point towards Gemma, it's gonna to point towards the background. I've got it on a little mini light stand, so we can pop this down here, we can angle it up, and it's hidden behind the sofa, so I'm not gonna see it from where I'm shooting. Okay, so let's take a shot with this in place and see how that looks.
there you go. So the lights are all set. All four of them are exactly how I want them. And we've got a little bit of movement, a bit of space that Gemma can move around in and she'll still keep within our lighting pattern. Now, I think we're ready to do the shoot. So what we need is a, a few more balloons. And Gemma, are you ready? Let's do the shoot. Okay, let's get you some more balloons. So there we go, we got some great shots at the end of that. Now all we need to do is to get my favourite picture into Photoshop and do some editing, and we're going to do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So when I was planning the shoot, I, I really had an idea of the final picture in mind, and the idea was about colours. I wanted the colours to be very muted, very pastel in tone. And although you can do a lot of things in camera, that's something that's a little bit more tricky. However, inside of Photoshop, it's actually quite straightforward. Let's have a look. So here's the picture. I've got it in Adobe Camera Raw, and I wanted to do a treatment that I could repeat on all of the images. And this one kind of appeals to me, so let's use this one. Now, the first thing I want to change actually is clarity. I want to give everything a nice soft glow. So we'll just bring the clarity slider down just a wee bit. Now, if you're talking about strength of colour, you've got to think about saturation and vibrance. And although they appear to do the same thing, they are definitely different. And vibrance is the one I want to use. Vibrance is a little bit different to saturation. Saturation does all colours equally, where vibrance, if you're reducing it, will leave behind the most saturated colours till last and deal with the least ones first. So it is a much more, uh, well, it's a much more intelligent sort of slider. Even if I go all the way down to minus 100, it never fully gets rid of the colours. And that's kind of what we want, but not that strong. So let's come down to sort of the, the 60 mark, something like that. So that's given me a muted colour scheme, but there's a few things I want to do. I want to target the oranges here because they're just not quite right. So to do that, I'm going to jump over to a different tab. I'll go to the HSL stroke grayscale. And here, I can affect the hue, saturation, and luminance of specific colours in the whole picture. So for example, if I get the oranges, I can make them stronger or weaker, and you can see how that affects the whole picture. And I want to bring them down, but I don't want to go too far because it will affect skin tones and the colour of the sofa in this case. So let's bring the oranges down a little bit like that. I can also increase colours as well. So for example, Gemma's got a sort of a purpley-ish toned dress, so I can just up the purples and I can really affect the, the sort of pastely tones in her dress. Now that's fine, but I'd like a little bit more colour back on Gemma's hair. So to do that, let me jump over to a different tool. I'm going to get the adjustment brush tool. And rather than working globally across the whole picture, this allows me to paint in local areas. So I can increase the saturation, I can just paint on Gemma's hair, and we'll just get a little bit of that orangey colour back. If I go too far, I can swap to erase. We can just tidy that up a little bit on the sofa. Right, I'm happy with that. So once you're happy, just open the picture into Photoshop, and you could stop here, or I could stop here, but there's one thing that I want to change. Now, I was lucky enough to have access to that studio for a few days, and it's a fantastic place to work, but my little studio, I rather like. And I particularly like the textured background that I have in my studio. So what I want to do is I want to get that texture from my studio and put it on this picture from the rented studio. And fortunately, I've done that. I've actually photographed the texture from my studio, so let's add it in. 
So here it is, if I come and open it up, and of course it doesn't have to be this texture, um, it can be anything, it just breaks up that white background. And I'm just gonna go to Select and All, Edit and Copy. I'll close this down, we don't need it anymore, and I can choose Edit and Paste. And that'll paste it on, and there's probably a little bit of wiggle room in here. Yeah, there is a wee bit, so I'll sort of center that up, I think. And then I just need to blend it in, so I'll change the blending mode, currently on normal, Let's drop it down and try soft light. Yeah, that works pretty well. I'll just take the opacity for that and reduce it so it's not quite so intense. And it just adds a little bit of texture into what otherwise was quite a, a bland blank background. Well, there we go. We had a great shoot and got a brilliant photograph at the end of it. Now, of course, we used a multi-light setup in this, but you can do some great stuff with just one single light. And if you want to see what I did with some balloons and a single light, you can see my previous video here on Adorama TV. And to see all the videos, of course, you need to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.